The Jadokta Formation is located in what is now Mongolia's portion of the Gobi Desert. The fossils uncovered from the region date back to between 75 and 71 million years ago, towards the final sections of the Cretaceous. Specifically, in a time known as the Campanian. It formed a colossal, expansive desert, similar to the Gobi found in the area today in the Nemegt Basin. Not far away, bizarre, gigantic theropods, such as Dinochirus and Gigantoraptor, have been discovered. But the Jadokta formation was known primarily for its smaller dinosaurs. Some of these were truly iconic, and the Jadokta has provided us with some of the most important, informative, and fascinating fossils to be discovered in all of prehistory to date. This was a world of vast, blistering sands, where it was likely warm in the day and cold in the nighttime. The dinosaurs found here were often gracile, slender, feathered animals or comparatively tiny ornithischians. Water and vegetation were valuable and rare in this harsh landscape. Occasional streams would have been present to provide relief from the dry dunes between the intermittent oases, where patches of shrubs and conifers grew. These would have provided a key food source for the animals living here, depended upon by the entire ecosystem. The Jadokta is comprised mainly of sands, sandstones, and clays, and has proven an extremely fruitful and abundant location to dig up dinosaur fossils. In this video, we will take you through the creatures that live there step by step, starting with the Ornithischians, taking a look at the abundant and iconic array of theropods before delving deep into the list of other prehistoric creatures that lived here. Birds, reptiles, mammals, and fish in the main. Since the Jadokta formation has proven to be so abundant in terms of fossils, there is not enough time in the video to explain every genus uncovered from the region in detail. So we will be talking today about the most significant finds the formation has had to offer we'll explore bizarre, frilled ornithischians, agile, slender theropods, and some prehistoric ancestors to a few of today's modern animals. Sit back and relax as we take you through a journey spanning several million years through the creatures of Mongolia's Jadokta Formation, a goldmine of dinosaur fossils. If the Jadokta formation is known for its Ornithischians, it's for its Ceratopsians. Throughout the Cretaceous, these herbivorous, quadrupedal, rhino-like creatures, usually horned and frilled, contain the likes of Triceratops, Styracosaurus, Centrosaurus, Pentaceratops, and Taurosaurus. But over in the Mongolian Gobi Desert, the Ceratopsians came in a much more modest package. Absent were the oversized walls of reptilian flesh that marched across the open plains of North America. The longest of these Ceratopsians in these harsh, sandy dunes, Udanoceratops, reached a maximum of three and a half meters. By modern animal standards, that might seem very large, but it's important to remember that elsewhere in the world, Ceratopsians were growing massive. Triceratops, for instance, grew between 8 and 9 meters in length, and its horns were often longer than a hockey stick. Traveling back to the deserts of Jadokta, however, and we'll encounter a whole host of little Ceratopsians. The most famous of these was Protoceratops by far. These relatively gracile Ceratopsians 
measured around 2 meters in length, and would have been an easily recognizable and common sight on the sands. Individuals may have gathered in small nesting colonies, close to the sparse patches of water and vegetation, where they needed to be wary of ambushes from some of the region's agile theropods. More on those later. Instantly recognizable is Protoceratops's iconic skull. Deep and strong jaws are encased in a tough, bony beak, and a frill was supported near to where the skull connected to the neck. This frill was small in comparison to the larger Ceratopsians, but still would have been a distinguishable feature to identify this creature amongst others. Its frill may have been adorned in vibrant flashes of color to signal and display to members of the same species. Udanoceratops, as described before, was almost like a bulkier, stranger-looking protoceratops. Its jaws were even bulkier, even deeper, and it supported its barrel-shaped body on legs that looked almost too slender to belong to them. The smallest of Jadokta's ceratopsian cast was Bagaceratops, a diminutive creature no bigger than just over a meter long. Looking again, much like Protoceratops, Bagaceratops would have sported a much shorter, blunter frill, which wouldn't have protruded too far from the base of the skull. Little groups of these animals likely browsed on the sparse vegetation of the dusty plains and sands, perhaps weaving in and out of larger ceratopsians as they did so. Goyocephaly was the sole representative of the pachycephalosaurs and followed the general classic form of these tough-skulled bipeds, with the exception of the head. Goyocephaly's skull did not protrude into the outward-facing domed shape in the same way the North American Pachycephalosaurus did. Instead, its head formed more of a flatter plate. Still tough, but perhaps not quite as well adapted to the extravagant sparring displays that were thought to have been exhibited in its cousin's behavior. The name Goyocephaly actually translates to decorated head, which gives a nod to how this dinosaur may have used its skull in visual displays rather than combative ones. The Ankylosaurids, those famous heavily armored dinosaurs with tough, bony ossicles covering the skin, and sometimes a weaponized bony club at the end of the tail, were also well represented in the fossils unearthed from the Jadokta formation. Pinacosaurus is certainly one of the more famous genuses underneath the Ankylosaur banner, and it would have wandered the dry landscapes of the Jadokta between 71 and 75 million years ago. Estimated to have a body mass of a fully grown horse, this was actually a rather lightly built ankylosaur, lacking some of the weight of the armor of its cousins. Measuring almost 5 meters from nose to tail, this was one of the larger named dinosaurs of the Jadokta formation and would have been relatively safe from attack from many of the region's small theropods. It was joined by Minotaurosaurus, which lived in roughly the same place at the same time. It may well have been larger than Panacosaurus. The type specimen of Minotaurosaurus is that of a young individual, and this alone was 4 meters in length. It also possessed a large tail club that would have been useful in battling away groups of attacking Trudontids or dromaeosaurs that got too close. The Jadokta formation was home to two spectacular little genuses of Alvarasaur. These little theropods 
with short, stubby arms tipped in one singular huge claw and two tiny ones, also possessed long legs and were mostly nocturnal. With analysis of the scleral rings around their eyes, showing that these little creatures hunted at night. Shivuya was one of them, a little owl-like predator that would have used a large singular claw on each forelimb to tap into the sides of dead wood, which potentially contained juicy invertebrates for the little dinosaur to lick up, much like a modern-day pangolin or anteater. That's exactly what these little theropods were, analogs to our modern-day edentates, or rather toothless mammals. Their lightly built skulls and superb hearing allowed them to locate and consume huge quantities of insects, and their minuscule teeth would have been shadowed by a potentially long tongue, used like an anteater's to swipe through insect nests and wood drawing food swiftly into its maw. What's more is that little Shavuya's chest and arm bones were well equipped for withstanding the impact of its claws slashing against nests and wood, and it would likely have been able to deliver a powerful blow, breaking off large sections of material to get its food. Coal, on the other hand, was stranger still possibly related quite closely to Shivuya, this creature possessed the same general build and odd little claws as its potential relative, but was instead much larger, measuring at over two meters as an upper estimate. This animal may have specialized in much larger termite mounds and ant colonies, and due to its size and long legs, must have been able to cover lots of ground and attack its prey's colony with even more force. They were by no means the only theropod out in the Jadokta sands though, and certainly not the most well known. The Jadokta formation was home to many small and bizarre theropods in particular. Trudontids, Ovaraptorosaurs, and dromaeosaurs all made their homes here, all of which were specialized to take on different types of prey at different times. The little trudontids, to begin with, were common and very bird-like. Among the most bird-like of all the Jadokta dinosaurs, among their ranks was Saur ornithoides, a swift, slender, and agile little carnivore. It likely ran across the sands at high speeds, pursuing the region's numerous species of mammals and birds, perhaps even young or small dinosaurs too. With its hawk-like appearance, consisting of likely dark plumage, winged forelimbs, and a feathery coat, it would have been very obvious in life that it was the theropods that gave rise to modern birds. The Trudontids were famously a smart clade of dinosaurs, often depicted as cunning, intelligent predators in popular media. Elsewhere in the Jadokta formation lived the likes of Byronosaurus and Gobi Venator. The former was the ultimate in swift, agile evolutionary technology. This little predator had tiny, needle-like teeth, which lacked serrations, allowing it to make short work of little mammals, birds, and reptiles by pinning them down with its jaws and dispatching it with the sharp claws on its feet. The skull of Byronosaurus was also pneumatized meaning that the bones possessed air spaces throughout, which may have served in making the dinosaur more lightweight. The latter, Gobi Venator, was again a swift, gracile little hunter, very bird-like in appearance, notably from its much shorter skull structure. 
Its skull also possessed the right conditions for cranial kinesis to form in birds. This would give them much more maneuverability in the skull's individual bones, specifically between the lower jaw and the brain case. The Alverosaurs and Trudontids were surely terrifying encounters, if you were an insect or a small multituberculate mammal for sure. But what about the larger hunters of the ancient Gobi Desert? Surely the Ornithischians had something to fear. Enter the Dromaeosaurs, specifically the most famous Dromaeosaur, and perhaps the second most famous dinosaur to exist ever, Velociraptor. Well known to both paleontologists and the public, Velociraptor, whose name translates to speedy thief, was a common predator on the sandy dunes of ancient Mongolia, who would have posed a significant threat to the locality's ceratopsian dinosaurs. Dinosaur books and imagery have often depicted little Velociraptor as the mortal enemy of protoceratops, for example, due to the discovery of a remarkable fossil in 1971 which showed the two dinosaurs locked in combat, eternally preserved in death as they were in their final moments with each other. The Velociraptor in the preservation lays on its right flank, one arm gripped firmly in the beak of the defending Protoceratops, while it kicks its sickle-like claw up towards the Ceratopsian's neck. The Protoceratops, meanwhile, seems to have the temporary upper ground as it stands over the attacking dromaeosaur, seemingly doing all it can to prevent itself from becoming a meal. Unfortunately, the encounter seemingly did not end well for either party. Velociraptor, as many of us are now aware, was not the scaly gigantic lizard beast known from the iconic Jurassic Park franchise of films and the subsequent Jurassic World sequels. In life, it would have been relatively tiny, measuring at the very longest just over two meters long, much more akin to the size of a large turkey than that of a nightmarish prehistoric man-eater. Velociraptor was also coated in a layer of thick feathers, which would have allowed it to keep warm at night, perhaps display to a mate, or maybe even camouflage itself against the sands of the unforgiving Gobi Desert, equipped with a famous sickle-like claw at the end of each foot. Little Velociraptor would have used these formidable weapons to slash a prey, much like the scene preserved in the famous fighting dinosaurs fossil with protoceratops. Recent studies have found that this iconic weapon may not have been able to disembowel its victims, but would have surely aided in wounding them significantly to turn the tables of any hunt in the Velociraptor's favor. Further examinations of Velociraptor show that it had an immensely strong sense of hearing and would have been able to detect and track prey with relative ease. Not only did it actively hunt prey, but it would have been more than happy to scavenge in times of climatic difficulty or drought, meaning that it would have been an incredibly versatile creature, perfectly adapted to the hostile environment in which it thrived. Velociraptor was by no means the only dromaeosaur present in the Jadokta formation, however, and one little creature native to the region caused a stir amongst the mainstream media when it was described in 2017. Halskaraptor was a dromaeosaur, related to Velociraptor, but preferred a lifestyle much more like that of a duck. Roughly the same size as the mallard ducks you might find around your local pond, it's likely that these diminutive dromaeosaurs even looked similar to modern waterbirds, with their rounded, flattened snouts, 
downy feathers, and slender necks. They will have fringed the oases and sparse water patches of the Jadakta formation, perhaps hunting small vertebrates such as reptiles or fish. Meanwhile, other, more traditional-looking dromaeosaurs stalked the sands. Sargon was one of them, a two-meter-long predator that may have also dueled with protoceratops from time to time. With a name derived from the Mongolian for white monster, Sargon was a close relative of Velociraptor and would have looked quite similar in general form and function. It is known from a complete skull, some neck vertebrae, and some bones from the shoulder but their similarity to those of Velociraptor has allowed scientists to discern what this full animal may have looked like and how it may have lived. It's probable that Sargon was a formidable little hunter that stalked the creatures of the Jadokta across the harsh sands of its ancient Gobi Desert home. To finish our journey through the main theropods of the Jadokta formation, we can't forget the Oviraptorids. Once thought to be cunning egg thieves, this group of feathered, mainly small theropods were a common sight in Cretaceous Asia. And the Jadokta formation was home to several genuses. The most famous of them all, and the group's namesake, Oviraptor, lived on these dusty dunes. At just less than two meters in length, this long-necked, long-legged, long-tailed theropod was, as we touched upon briefly, once thought to subsist on a diet of eggs. A vicious raider of nests that would wait until other dinosaurs turned their backs before robbing them of their future offspring. This was due to remains of Oviraptor being found close to fossilized dinosaur nests and eggs. And paleontologists were under the impression, for a good while, that this dinosaur was intending to prey upon the fetuses inside. Instead, studies have since shown that these eggs actually belonged to the Oviraptor mother herself, and that she was simply taking care of them. Other Oviraptorosaurs of the locality include Khan, an even smaller dinosaur, that, similar to Oviraptor, would have been a feathered omnivore, subsisting potentially on a mixture of plant matter and small creatures, both vertebrate and invertebrate, that it was able to sift from the oases or sands. It was accompanied by the larger city patty, an Oviraptorid tall enough to look an adult human man square in the eye. Meanwhile, amongst the skeletal bushes and the blistering peaks of the sand dunes, small groups of Avimimus would have gathered, searching for scraps of food beneath the sands. As it goes with any major ecosystem on planet Earth today, the Jadokta formation is not solely known for its remarkable diversity of dinosaur fossils. A whole host of other creatures have been unearthed from the dry sands of Mongolia's Gobi Desert. From early birds and mammals, to bizarre creatures that you almost wouldn't recognize as ancestors to crocodiles. Reptiles in particular were abundant throughout the six or so million years that the Jadokta formation spans, and they would have populated the entire region, from the dusty sands to the shallow oases. Lizards were an exceptionally common sight, and many species have been unearthed here. A time traveler to the region would likely be able to catch sight of creatures such as Ovu, Aeolosaurus, and Telmasaurus and would recognize them as Varanoids and Varanids, relatives to modern-day monitor lizards such as the Nile Monitor 
or Komodo dragon. The multiple genuses would have ranged widely in size and would have been adaptable generalists, perfectly suited to continuing their line to the present day. Scurrying across the dunes and rocks would be creatures such as Myrmecodaptia, an early relative of geckos, would have dashed after insects, blending in with the sand. In fact, multiple families of modern lizards were represented here, including the iguanas, skinks, beaded lizards, and even chameleons. Unlucky individuals would have proven an inviting and handy snack for a passing true daunted. Like many other localities across the Cretaceous world, turtles were a common sight towards the fringes of the oases and shallow streams that cut through the barren desert of the Jadokta Formation. Zangurlia was one of them, but it likely didn't spend too much of its time in the water. It was a Nancy Uncalid turtle, which sported a broad, bulky shell that wouldn't have fared too well under the water. Its relatives, including the similarly shaped Basilimus, were found across Asia, adding an odd splash of terrestriality to the usually aquatic turtles of the Cretaceous. Crocodilomorphs were as abundant here as they were everywhere else throughout the course of the Mesozoic too, and three genuses, Shamosuchus, Gobiosuchus, and Arzosuchus are known. Like many of the carnivores out on the harsh Jadokta sands, these crocodile relatives were lithe, gracile, and agile, something we don't associate with modern-day crocodiles and alligators at all. By being slender and quick, creatures living in these hot, dry areas evolved to increase the overall surface areas of their bodies, allowing them to shed excess heat. Think of modern-day desert creatures. Some creatures, such as gerboas, dromedary camels, lizards, and snakes, are all relatively slender compared to their cousins that live elsewhere in the world. By doing this, they can keep themselves cool and comfortably thrive in their desert homes. Speaking of mammals, the Jadokta formation is certainly a hotbed for them. Some of the most famous Cretaceous mammals, such as the Lambda Lestes, a shrew-like eutherian mammal more closely related to modern placental mammals than to marsupials. In fact, several basic mammal groups were represented here. Multi-tuberculates, eutherians, metatherians, and tribosvenids. Many of these mammals, as was the norm throughout the Cretaceous, were small creatures reminiscent of rodents. Many would have been nocturnal, emerging at night to snatch insects hiding in the sand or by the water's edge. Although these little mammals were vaguely similar in size, their forms and functions were much more diverse. Cryptobatar was a hopping creature and would have filled the ecological niche now populated by modern-day gerboas or kangaroo rats. Delta Theridium was a predator, a creature early on the evolutionary path that led to modern-day marsupials. Surprisingly, Delta Theridium tooth marks have been found on fossils of dinosaurs, implying that this creature actively hunted large prey or was defending itself from attack. Maylestes was an opossum-like creature that, although belonging to the group Eutheria, did not have a placenta and gave birth to underdeveloped, minuscule young. The aforementioned Zalamdalestes was actually similar in form and function to a rabbit, 
with powerful hind legs that would have allowed it to hop as it leapt through the sparse undergrowth after insects. The long, narrow snout gave this creature a superficial, shrew-like appearance, however. Whatever the little species of mammals inhabiting the sands and scrublands of Jadakta were doing, they were on an early path to world domination. Biding their time, living simple lives in the shadows of some of the most famous dinosaurs ever to live. It wouldn't be too long, in geological terms, before these small, furry creatures were developing into the weird and wonderful forms of the Cenozoic. For now, however, they were very much all diminutive animals that posed little threat to many of the dinosaurs. Jadokta is also famous for its extinct avifauna, the bird life of the region. Three genera are known from their concrete physical remains, whereas a further two are known from trace fossils, eggs laid by a parent bird which never hatched and through one way or another became preserved in time forever. The bird genera known from these luckily found trace fossils are Protoceratopsidovum, which could potentially even be a genus of theropod non-avian dinosaur, and Styloolithus, a particularly large avian species that meticulously tended to its eggs, sitting on them to regulate their temperature as they were partially buried under the Jadokta sands. A number of bird species are known from the Jadokta formation region, from their physical, skeletal, fossil remains, however. And it is these birds that we can discern more about, including how they may have lived and looked. The enantiornithine birds were common throughout the Cretaceous, characterized by their toothed beaks, clawed wings, and overall similarities in their appearances to modern passerine birds, such as sparrows, flycatchers, pittas, birds of paradise, and finches. Enantiornithine birds are known extensively from every continent except Antarctica, and to this day, over 80 genera have been discovered and described by paleontologists. Due to the fact that some of these genera are known from only a single bone, it is unlikely that each and every taxon described thus far will be valid. But in the skies of the Cretaceous forests, deserts, lakesides, and coastal regions, they were no doubt a very common sight sharing their domain with the mighty pterosaurs, so synonymous with the Mesozoic era. The Jadokta enantiornithines include Gobipteryx and Elsornis. The former, discovered in 1971, is much more closely known, which is thought to have definitely been capable of flight due to its long forearms which were more than twice the length of its thorax, estimated to be roughly the size of a modern-day partridge, Gobipteryx would have been a common sight out on the sands, fluttering between the sparse patches of vegetation and probably stalked and hunted by theropod dinosaurs. Its beak was short and the skull was comma-shaped, giving the bird's snout a strange, upturned appearance. In life, it may have been rather nondescript, coated in a drab layer of sandy brown feathers to help it blend in with its desert home. Elsornis, the second enantiornithine known from the Jadokta formation, translates into English as sandbird, and was named and described in 2007. Unlike Gobipteryx, it was likely earthbound and could not fly. With a face uncannily similar to the true daunted theropods with which it shared the sands, Elsornis may have looked superficially 
like a modern-day Tinamu. A group of flying ratite birds, native to South and Central America. Related, surprisingly, to ostriches, emus, cassowaries, and rheas. Like the Tinamus, it was likely a plump creature, coated in a layer of dark, downy feathers with relatively short wings. To make up for this, it was likely a fast runner, maybe using camouflage as its primary defense to stay hidden from predators, then running away if that was to fail. Many of the known enantiornithines were capable of flight, so Elsornis and its lack thereof gives us a much bigger insight into the diversity of these early birds not usually seen. Another bird known from the region is Absaravis. Absaravis was not an enantiornithine bird, but an ornithurine, a member of the group most commonly associated with being the ancestors of common coastal and seabirds of the Cretaceous, such as Ichthyornis and Hesperornis. The former, a tern or gull-like piscivore, and the latter, a long-necked prehistoric analog to penguins, divers, and cormorants. Absuravis was a paleontological conundrum then, in the sense that it possessed the features more commonly associated with ornithurine birds, not enantiornithine ones, but was clearly adapted to living in the desert in which it was unearthed. Stranger still is that many of the birds associated with Absaravis are seabirds, known for populating the coastal regions and freshwater patches of the Cretaceous, Absaravis would not have fared well in such a locality, and at first glance, would have looked much more like an enantiornithine, with a stubby beak, broad wings, and legs that gave off more of an impression of a modern-day perching bird. Absaravis shed some light on the fact that these birds were much more diverse than originally thought. Our understanding of the diverse and often bizarre Jadokta formation is constantly expanding. Many of the creatures unearthed from these harsh, barren sands are relatively new discoveries, which leads to the possibility that there is still much to discover that we don't know about the region. Few other places on Earth at the time could boast such a magnificent collection of weird and wonderful theropods. And like Hell Creek, many of the dinosaurs that lived in this region were superstars, with the environment harboring Velociraptor, Protoceratops, Oviraptor, Avimimus, and Panacosaurus. It would likely be a first choice destination for any would-be time traveler if only such a thing were possible. It's not even the icons that make the formation as intriguing as it is, though. Looking at the likes of Halskoraptor, City Patty, Khan, and Udanoceratops, the likely possibility of bumping into a creature uncomprehensibly dissimilar to modern life in the Jadokta region would have been high to say the least. We hope you enjoyed this journey through the blistering sands of ancient Mongolia. Thank you for watching.